Well, hello guys. Hello. Welcome to the couch. Yes. <laughs> some hot tea. It's a little bit warmer today. Well, maybe it's just the sun is out today. The sun is out. It's not warmer. It's cold outside. It's quite chilly. My outside. house had snow over the weekend. Um, we we lost the battle. Uh, we turned on our heat yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I have kids, so my heat came on like two or three weeks ago. I use the kids as an excuse. Oh, Honey, it's too cold for the baby. Exactly. <laughs> the baby's freezing. Right. Even though my son could care less. <laughs> If it's like, oh, have like the everything's camera. Balmy. Yeah, <laughs> he, I, I'm, I swear that kid does not feel. I have cold. a t-shirt on. I'm good. <laughs> kid does not feel cold at all. Well, this is the Lumen About podcast, and I'm Alicia, also known as AT47 on Ravelry, and I'm Liz, also known as Lizzie215 on Ravelry. And you sound better. I am. I'm better. And look, I've spoken four sentences without coughing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to edit as much this time. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm still a little hoarse, but yeah. at least I'm almost back to my normal self for the most part. I feel like my energy level has returned. Yes, energy level has definitely returned. And I didn't get those fevers you guys got. Oh, that's good. Which is a good thing because it's a good thing my energy level returned because last week was busy. Mm. With yeah. two little ones, Halloween, and then it was my a daughter's birthday. My daughter's birthday last Friday. Vogue Knitting Live. Vogue Knitting Live just made it busier. So there's like school party celebration uh -huh. and then there's like birthday party celebration. Yeah. Did you take like cupcakes to school yet? Or yes. Yeah, she's old enough for this now. She's old enough for that, but I, we don't take cupcakes. Okay, we took take? maple snickerdoodle cookies, homemade by you. I made. Like, you made them? I made them. You didn't even have grandma make some nope. baking? No. Nope. Go not, mom. I did not pass the baking off to grandma. And then with so many kids having different allergies and stuff. Yeah. You know, or being gluten free. Like the only thing I remember growing up was like maybe one kid in like middle school allergic to peanuts. Yeah. Nobody yeah, was allergic to peanuts. No, no, no. And then so then we also made little fruit skewers for those kids who were gluten free. Little oh, fruit and smart. cheese skewers. Yeah. Could they make uh, it themselves, or did you? No, we did it all ourselves. Stuff. So they could. So the kids, the kids had a choice. They could have a cookie. You can have a cookie and a fruit skewer, or if they were the gluten free, then All they got skewers. two fruit, fruit yeah. and cheese skewers. So it went over really well, I thought. Nice. So no complaints from parents. No complaints from the parents, from the teachers. The teachers were all excited. They're like, those are like the perfect. Because I also made small cookies. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, they're four. They don't need cookies the size of their head. So yeah. they were like little, like bite sized cookies and Excellent. stuff. So it was a lot of fun. You look like you have knitting on. She's hiding it from you guys. Oh, I do. I'm wearing socks. She's got green socks on right now. Yeah. I made these with Alicia. Yeah. These are the Winding Way socks. Winding that, Way? Yeah. That was from Tin Can? No. no. It was from a magazine, I want to say. One of your magazines. We'll it up. Yeah. We'll find it. Winding Way. I feel like somebody traveled to Europe and it was, or, I, yeah, Europe. So, Ireland. They went to Oh, well, maybe it was some Tin Can then. I'm thinking so, and it was a staircase that they saw. But, so, yeah, so, yeah, that looks like, you know, stair stairways that are going back and forth. Um, I made mine a little too small, so they ended up at my, for my grandmother for Christmas last year. Was it last year that they were so Yeah. Was the year before? No, it was like know, summer was, last it year. It was sometime. <laughs> so mine was teal, and I used schmutzarella. Just like she did in her Girl on Fire. Yes. But mine was in a teal. And it was actually for... Um, Knit Pearl Hunter's sock. It was like an exclusive sock colorway that we got because oh, yeah. we're local. It was at Maker's Mercantile. Um, and then I used it for a different sock. Because we've done one of her knit alongs. We did we did the, the whole shawl. story or something. Yeah, the whole the shawl. Yeah. Which is a beautiful linen shawl. It was my first shawl. Was it your first shawl? It was my first shawl as well. First lace. First lace. Oh man, and and each section was a different piece of lace that I've never seen. Right, no, like it was since. A, it, it was a really beautiful pretty. shawl. And so, yeah. There's like starbursts in one of them. And oh, it was really pretty. It's, I think it's called The Whole Story. And that was our first mystery knit along. Yes, the first and one. I, I think I swore off of mystery knit alongs after that, but then I've done <laughs> many more since. You have done many more since. <laughs> so you can call me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> um, it turned out that that was the first time me using um, any kind of alpaca in a blend, and that's why you swore it off. Yeah, you, you didn't. She didn't know she was allergic to alpaca at the yeah. time. Yeah, so pretty much the whole thing, I just swore off everything because I was so mad at it. Um, I wore it to 
um, Benaroya Hall. That's where you go for listening to classical music done by orchestra here in Seattle. And I had a kind of a low cut top, so I want I don't wear low cut things as you've probably noticed. Um, so I wore the shawl to cover up my uppers. I came home and I broke out from everywhere it touched my skin. I I had hives and just broke out hard. And I was like, what is going on? I had no idea what was going on. Um, so it turns out that was my first um, delve into finding out what alpaca does to me. So I gave it away promptly. I gave it to my mother-in-law for Christmas or something. I gave it away to my mother-in-law too. Yeah, so it turned out to be our mother-in-law <laughs> story. My mother-in-law still wears it. She yeah. loves it. Yeah, it is definitely loved by people who don't have an allergic reaction. Because we use the same yarn. You used a different color. Yes, I used the, the more naturally, mm -hmm. like, linen-colored one, I guess, would be the best term to say. Yeah, it, it was like driftwood. Yeah, that's it. I think it was the color. And I can't think of what mine was. But, yeah, it went over well. It was, it was a success. And then I swore off doing mystery knit-alongs. And then I... Years went by, and I think this past year I've done a couple thanks to Annetta, who's been an <laughs> awesome partner, a partner in crime with mysteries. I really appreciate that. Um, we we tend to have the same schedule of wanting to knit things at the same time, so um, it was actually her and I discussing how you know these knit alongs have gone for us that this knit miss has come about. Um, so knit miss was a brainstorming of Anetta and I at first, and then it just kind of grew into something that other people wanted to do. And your partners have been announced. You should have gotten a Ravelry they message. Been you've been, they've been messaged. Yeah, you've been messaged. <laughs> now, this is Secret Santa, so don't go direct to your partner and ask them questions. We have a thread open. Um, I think it's called Knit Misses Coming or something to that effect in the Ravelry group. Um, you can post questions that everybody can answer. So if you guys haven't gone out to that thread yet and you're part of Knitmas 2018 or yep. 2017, I don't know. I don't know what year we're... Let's call it 2018. I think 2018. It, should be, it should be the year that the... Because it's due in February. Yes. The year it's due is what it's going to be associated with. Yes. Um, go out to the thread. There's one open. Um, I unlocked it a couple days ago when everybody found out who their partner was. And there are two questions so far, so please answer them. Even if you think, oh, they're probably not my partner, they could be. And this keeps it way more anonymous if everybody's answering everybody's question, right? So we can keep this a secret. Um, go out there and answer. Annetta has a question about your head circumference and your hand circumference and your foot sizing so that, you know, your partner could know. Somebody's already posted two patterns that she wants to do. I think Kim put up two patterns that she's thinking about, hoping that her partner will respond and then she'll <laughs> know which one she should knit for them. So so there's three one, three of them that you should be answering. Oh, and one's about like goodies that you like, chocolate or savory pretzels, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, get out there. Do some grouping. Maybe ask a question or two just to keep this uh, thread alive. Um, you know who you got. I do know who I got. Do you know who what you're knitting? I do know what I'm knitting, but again, it's secret, and I don't want to say because that might give the person an idea of who I got. Oh, that's true. Okay. So, because I did some stocking. Yeah. I'm doing stocking right now. So, um, and by stocking it meant I went and looked at my uh, partner's... Like her cue, her, her cue, favorites. Yes, and her favorites, and went to see what she has knit, to see what she knits the most of, so it's something, you know... And what she wears. What she wears, yeah. And if she didn't answer well enough the questions that we asked in the brainstorming, maybe you could infer some answers right. by just looking at what she's accomplished. So, yeah. So, I do, and I've done my stocking, okay. and I have picked a pattern... And okay. I have picked yarn. I went in for what was one of my goals at Bow Knitting Live this weekend. We made a list. Yeah, I had a list going of things I needed to buy. And I, so, I stuck to my list mostly. I stuck to... I'm really good. 
She got a couple extra skeins. I got but she's couple, gonna use them. I got a couple of extra <laughs> skeins because Okay, well let's okay, we're gonna talk about Vogue knitting. We might as well show everybody what yeah. we got at Vogue knitting. Okay. You wanna go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So I had a list of things that I needed stuff for the tin uh, not the tin cannon, the old loops, um Harry Potter knit along so for the scarf. Mm -hmm. And uh, I needed, I wanted yarn for my partner because I'd already picked the, I picked the pattern before I went to VK, so I needed yarn for um, her pattern. Yeah, you decided to DK or worsted. DK or worsted. And we figured she'd have that weight. Right. And she did. Well, no. And unfortunately, all her DK or worsted were in kits. Well, not unfortunately. It wasn't that unfortunate. <laughs> this kit is lovely. So I ended up having to buy a kit. She has kits for the own shawl. No. But it was the only kit that had like a gray silver color. And look at that blue. So I ended up buying a kit. I will not be making the own shawl, no. but I will be using the three grays to make the gray silvers to make the scarf for my friend mm -hmm. Cass. And then, and then you'll then, have three extra. And then I'll have three extra. Oh, darn it. That already <laughs> look great together. Yes. Uh, no idea what I'm going to do with those three extra, but they're there. And what's what, her weight? What is that weight called? This, she calls it figure eight. Okay. And that's a D. It's a, uh, no, it's 218. So I want to say it's worsted. worsted. Yeah. It's worsted. Um, it's so it's really hundred percent super wash merino wool, which is good, good scarf material. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so then I have the other three. One will probably go to my Potter. partner, my Harry Potter swap partner. She sent me an email. Uh, okay. She's going to put my package in the mail tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get hers out tomorrow or okay. Wednesday at the latest as well. Yeah. Everybody needs O Loops yarn, right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing this O Loops Harry Potter thing. Right. So I thought the best way to send her was another O Loops yarn so she could maybe use it in next month's project or hold yeah. on to it for next year or participate in another Olu KAL. And we don't know the colors because it looks like the bands are all piled <laughs> maybe right here. Yeah. <laughs> so don't we, know the she hasn't opened it. So if she opens it by the time I edit this, I will list the colorways yes. for you. Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay. Was that the only thing you bought at O Loops? That was the only thing I bought at O Loops. Okay. I bought something at O Loops. Yes, you did. And... Uh, I was so overwhelmed. She had so many beautiful colors. I was touching everything. I felt a little pressure to get out of the way because it, it was, was a small, it was a small space. Um, and I was looking at the single skeins and looking and looking and looking, and I'm like, nothing's really jumping at me. I like a lot of things, but nothing's like, ah, get it. Well, I looked on one of the shelves, and there were pears. So oh, these the are pears were, yeah. two 50 gram skeins. This gets more good light over there. Um, this is called yeah, we'll Drive All Night. And it's in her there perfection knot. So it's the same 7525 that we've been using thus far. Um, one is black. And that black is a speckle in the bluish skein. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. And it's 50-50. So I get 463 yards. Half of it's black and half of it's this other colorway. And that is O-Loops. She was sharing her... I'm going to show the correct side of this card. She was sharing her booth with Vanna and Bean, which is a bag maker. Beautiful bags. I picked up one that was uh, Nightmare Before Christmas themed. And I even told you, you know, Sean, Sean loves, loves this. I come home. He opens up Vanna and Bean because he loves to look through everything I, I buy. And he's like, oh. <gasps> Did he oh my keep the gosh, bag? did you see this bag? He wanted it. I was like, I should have just <laughs> bought it while I was there. So um, th we got a coupon code from them. Oh, so you can order it. I can order it for Sean in the end. Oh, well, let me know if you order something. I might, yeah. there were, she had so many cute bags that I just didn't have time to look I know. through. It, they were so cute. So I would like to order one too. Um, but speaking of bags. Yeah. I bought oh, a bag. Isn't that Awesome. That is Darth Vader, guys. It is Darth Vader <laughs> in, like, a paisley pattern. Uh -huh. We went to KC Pockets. KC Pockets on the suggestion of Anetta and Kim. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Anetta has been there, a booth babe, before um, over in the eastern side of the states. And I had never seen the Darth Vader. No, I've paisley. seen the droid one. I've seen the droid one a lot. Kind of looks like a, you know, or, they, you know, this is more like a, also, Dia de los Muertos pattern. Yeah kind of look 
So the droid really looks more like Dia de los Muertos. It's more colorful mm -hmm. and stuff. And you see that one a lot. It's definitely got some pinks and oranges right. in it. But I have never I mean, seen the Darth I've Vader one. I've never seen this one. And since next year is the year of the sweater. <laughs> we got I've, sweater bags. I got a sweater bag. So I can start putting my sweaters in. And she, <laughs> Alicia got one oh, too. Oh, show the interior. Oh, the interior, yes. They're, they're very nicely lined interiors as well. Mine's just like a black. Um, if you, you can, can see, see that. The, 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 the tag matches the inside. Yeah, let's see if we can... Oh, oh, there, there it go. is. Get an <laughs> angle on there so you can see. It almost looks like skeins of yarn. But Alicia got the other bag I was looking at. So sloths. So Sean has decided that his spirit animal is sloth. <laughs> so Liz is drinking out of his sloth mug today. Anything sloth I can bring home, he's super happy about. So those are those sandblasted yeah. mugs. I don't know if you guys have seen those before. Um, now... There is a drawback. The interior. <laughs> so I decided I want to. I think I'm going to email Casey Pockets and ask her to make me a sloth one without the without interior the pink. Me, without the paint. It's kind of got little spots in there. So I've decided that it's my mission to just fill this with lots of yarn. <laughs> so like you can't see the put, bag. Yeah, put put a project in there that's too big for this bag and just stuff it so I don't see the interior as much. But Casey Pockets to go. Mm -hmm. You should check them out. This is, it's great for a shawl and probably a vest, and I'm going to use it for a sweater. Yeah. You can't put any rules on me. No. I'm going to just stuff this thing. <laughs> you can stuff it full. <laughs> but and she was so up. nice, by the way. We got Super to meet her sweet. and talk to her for a little bit. And I think her husband was working in the booth, too. Yeah. And he was, just, he was great at the upsell. I found that. The, the, <laughs> the partners, husbands. The husbands of these women that were they're selling their wares. Your husbands are just there. You know what else you should buy. Yeah. You know what else would look great with that. Which leads us to our next one. Yeah. Um, so the local yarn store, one of the local yarn stores to me is called the Nifty Knitter. And they were introducing a new yarn to them called uh, by the company called Blue Brick. We yeah. also got to meet the dyer here. And her very, very... They were energetic. The, her the, very, yes. For being as... I mean, it wasn't crazy early, but this, this was the first wave of people, right? Yeah. They were on the ball. I just... You know you know what? This one ends in speckles. Did you see that? There's two that end in speckles. <laughs> so Alicia and I... So she makes these beautiful... Great, you can't tell this here because they're wound and hang, but they're gradients. And this is the inspiration for that one. With very long... It's waterfall. Color runs, and it's called yeah. Waterfall. And then the other one I got was, I'm going to butcher this name. Isn't it just eggshell? Oh, eggshell. I was like, no, but what she calls the yarn. It's called oh. Manitoulin Merino Sparkle. They're from Canada. Yes, they're from Canada. And I wanted the ones, two of her gradients, one of the sections of the gradients have speckles in it. Mm -hmm. And since I love speckles, so I bought both of them that had speckle mm -hmm. in them. You can't tell here, but... And you probably won't see them in a while because it's me. It might take me a while to knit them up, but beautiful yarn. So we shared the waterfall one. Yes. Because Alicia, let's get real. Alicia's going to knit that first, and I'm going to knit this like two years from January right <laughs> here. Yeah. Now, and this one is called Feather. And I've got the inspiration card for that, too. But so anyways. charcoals, but they both end on a cream. So I'm just going to so they gave us go the, from one to the next. They gave us a great idea that... Any product you have with a gradient, if it takes, you know, you could go from one to the other, and then it just looks super cool. Yeah. Because I thought about getting two, now they're 500 yards. They're 500 yards, yes. Of a sock weight, which is what we've been using for Lily Go. Um, so I'm going to do the January Lily Go mystery knit along with Anetta. Hi, Anetta. I've already signed you up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to do it with that. And I thought to have two gradients that started at the same spot, roughly, and you could just alternate the two skeins so that the you gradient would longer. be longer, right? Um, and I would get the 1,000 yards. I think the large needs 900 yards. So that was my thought. Um, they rung me up, and it was crazy expensive. <laughs> I was like, are, are you sure that was only two skeins? So um, not cheap, but they are beautiful. Yes. And the thought that it's going to end on a speckle, which one of mine will, um, I'm just so excited to see that knit up. I, but, have you seen a gradient end in a speckle? Because I haven't. But to go back to the upselling husband, her husband was there too. And I was like, I can't decide. And he, of course, was like, well, you know what you should do. 
You buy should it get all. both. <laughs> yeah, you can buy it all. You should buy one of each. She had about 10, maybe 11 colorways. Yes, and they're all beautiful, long gradients. So, And now you can get them at the Nifty Knitter. Yeah. Um, I'm, I didn't look to see if you could buy it from her directly, like in an Etsy store. Um, I think she, well, I know she has a website. Yes, you can buy it directly from her. The only problem is you, you have to pay, I mean, shipping from the California shipping isn't bad. Oh, Canada. Or Canada, sorry. Shipping from Canada isn't bad to the U U.S. For the United States, it's good uh -huh. for this transaction. Yes. Um, yes. And actually, it might be cheaper because Canadian dollar is, is, is. That's true. So next time we might have to look at ordering from her. Right? We might have to go direct. But it, it was so beautiful to see in person. It was it was nice to see. Now that they we, were true to the colors that you saw online. And online. now that we know that, now I feel comfortable. Because sometimes you're kind of iffy about... Somebody in our group is like that. She only buys in person. Yeah. Huh, Annette? <laughs> I see you. I see you, baby. Um, she's like, like, no, I can't buy online. I can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can buy online. <laughs> so now I'm telling you, you can't. But now that we've seen so it in person and know that our colors are true and it's beautiful, yeah, I'm I'm quite I feel quite safety, you know, oh, yeah. okay buying online from her. She had some purples. She had some purples. We did not fall on any purples, but she had the rainbow. I was really looking at. I, I can you tell I'm kind of in a rainbow. She's in a rainbow theme. mood. So I thought about the rainbow, but I had to save some money because mm -hmm. we were only halfway through, and I was only that halfway was through my stop. list. Yeah, that was our <laughs> third stop. There were lots of booths, and there were um, a couple of our LYS yeah. stores were there. Church Mouse was there, Seattle Yarn, um, the Nifty Knitter, of course, we just went. Acorn um, Yarn. Acorn was there. I feel like, was Makers there? Yes. Yes. Because they were talking about how um, their baker is leaving. Yeah. Which is sad. So... The other thing I ordered, kind of knitting related, but not. Is this I, was on the list. This was on the list. Are these little handheld looms? Mm -hmm. So I can show the back of this. So you can make like little bracelets and pom poms. It can be your pom pom that maker. That pom pom maker is brilliant. If you want it to be, but I got three of these because my nieces and my daughter are really into crafts. Mm -hmm. So um, how old are your nieces? My nieces are twelve and eleven. Okay. And, and we could have a conversation with the woman who was running this booth. It was she was chatting it up. She yeah. let you know which ones were the best for the age group. You for were the age for. group, and so this one, this one specifically is good for little kids. My daughter's only four now, and so she's crafty. She's crafty, and she's always asking for you know she wants my yarn and wants to do, she wants to knit, but she doesn't quite have the manual dexterity for knitting. So I thought this would be a good way to get her into. Yarning. Plus, she can wind around those sticks right there. She can wind around the sticks. She can use all my extra straps. And to make and a bracelet, stuff. you kind of tether off on either end. Right. You start at one end or the other and one end. You know, depending on the width of your bracelet that you want. So, and it just it's little weaving. Clever. So it is super clever. And so. And there's lots of videos online. They have a ton of how-to videos online. My nieces are the YouTube queens mm -hmm. on how to do things. And learn things online, everything from making slime to who knows what else. So check it out if you're having some thoughts about Christmas mm -hmm. and kids. This and you have crafty fun. kids. Yeah. So, so yeah. So who I got doesn't those. need more pom poms. <laughs> I wouldn't mind somebody else making my pom poms. I know. I'm going to teach my daughter to make me pom poms. <laughs> and I thought she could make, you know, she then she could make little animal pom pom animals. Yes. And oh yeah. The, the ideas are pom pom endless. necklaces, snowman, snowman. Yeah, so she she could go nuts with that. Yeah, you could have new ornaments this year because of that. Yeah, she could make Christmas ornaments for Grandma and Grumps and every you know everybody else. Yeah. And then the last thing I bought, oh man, was this... yarn for the swat for the for knitmas. Yeah, it's not picking up the teal in no. there. No, so this is a very there it dark is. teal. Oh, there you go. And charcoal. Do you see the teal just popping out of there? It's a color called Empty Night. And that's from Magpie. And Magpie Fibers. And it's Swanky DK. So it's an MCN blend. I wanted to treat my partner. I wanted to treat my partner very well. I keep on going the wrong way. <laughs> Away from the camera. so pretty. And it's so soft and squishy. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
Yeah. She's like, oh, what do you think about this color? I was like, no, there's no thinking. Put that <laughs> in your bag. Let's go. So, yes, oh I'm gosh. very excited about this. And talk about upsell. Yeah, talk about upsell. Yeah, Alicia did the upsell on that one. I did. Okay, so they have all these candles. Yes. And all kinds of scents. Okay, I picked out my two. Good ones. earthy scents. The first one I smelled was this one. Bourbon. Yes. So... I don't know if you know this, Annetta, but you're getting a box from me. <laughs> because I thought of you when I yeah, saw Yeah, the bourbon, bourbon smells so good. So I got the same one, too. Alicia and I have very similar scent palettes. And then brown sugar and fig. Did you get that one, too? I also got brown sugar and fig. Just mine was in a different jar. Different type jar. of jar. So, But they had a deal going on. If you bought three candles, you got the fourth one free. So, And this is from waxandwoolecetera.com. Oh. It's coming up right there, but yeah, I'll that put brown it sugar and fig is amazing. Cutest jars. It's it's a dark brown jar. Candle inside is white. Now it's different from the last candles we've shown you on here because it doesn't have a wooden wick. Yeah. It's got a very <laughs> got a normal thick wick. wick in there. But also still soy. It's a soy based candle again. Yep, small batch, hand poured soy wax candles. Tells you the batch number and everything. Oh my goodness. Love it. So, yeah, it was buy three, get one free. So we just bought four together. <laughs> yep. Because that's, that's how we do. <laughs> yeah. That's how we roll. That's how we shop at these events. Um, they had jewelry there, too. They had some beautiful hand press. Hand like, stamped. It hand was stamped. So, that's it. Yeah. So pretty. And they had made keychains and other things. Check these guys out. Magpie. Magpie right? Fiber. They will be at Knit Fit. Oh, we have, we have to discuss if we're going to Knit Fit. <laughs> to go to guys like I didn't spend enough money I, I stayed to um my my to-do <laughs> list except for one thing so we found the corral of yarn but we decided that we didn't need anything no we, we decided our stashes were big enough yeah so um you this know on our way out we're, our way we're, out. we're I, leaving I look over and that's a booth I've never seen before hey that looks familiar I know that band they had junk yarn. What? I junk yarn. Color inspired by women. This is called Vanessa. This is smooth sock four ply, 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon, 463 yards. So this could be the same base that Oloops uses because those are the same dimensions and descriptions on this yarn. Um, super soft, super yummy. This is purple, and yes, you saw some red in there, <laughs> and there's a bit of that deep purpley fuchsia up here. That's acceptable pink for me for this. Now, I this you've seen us. For, this is going to Sean anyways, I bet. It might be. It might be, or it might go to my partner. Oh, okay. For the knit miss. Um, just because it's speckle, and every speckle that's come into my house has gone out of my house without me knitting it. <laughs> Do you see a pattern here? So this one might get knit up by me, but I think it still might be gifted to somebody. I've never knit speckled yarn. I buy it, and then I have second thoughts about it, and then it becomes surprises. <laughs> or Liz also sees it, and she buys it from me from ZK. Yeah. And I think you've done that for two years now. She got, um, who's the other speckled person oh, that was from the van? I can't remember. Uh, knit. No, it's not 716. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking it was. Oh, she's from, like, England or Ireland or something. <laughs> Hedgehog? Hedgehog. Hedgehog so fibers. So I brought Hedgehog fibers home. Liz bought it. Um, I brought back that mustache kit. Liz bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Liz likes speckled yarn, even though I haven't knit in anything like exactly. that. We love to look at it, but we never knit But that's it. mostly because I'm a slow knitter, and, like, my, my to-do knit list is long. I'm so excited about this. So um, my partner might be getting something partially purple. Um, I'm thinking of using two skeins for my knit miss partner. Um, I, I think this is one of them. I think the other one will have to be a very subdued skein, like super, super hardly any color in it, except for maybe charcoal or something, <laughs> because there's just little spots of charcoal at the end. I'm super excited. Okay, so that was, yeah, so that, that's, that is the, Z, that is the uh, VK. Yeah, well, live we, running. we did not stay for Complete. any of the fashion shows or anything. We, no. we were on a schedule. 
Yeah, I had to come home because we had some work to do at the house with my dad. And then it was snowing. Yeah, it was snowing. So, you didn't so want to then be... I had to cancel on dad. <laughs> it took me an hour and a half to come 13 miles. Oh, no. It was horrible. Most of it was Seattle drivers who don't know how to drive in the rain and snow. Typical. Ooh. Typical Northwest. Um, we just don't see the elements. Nope. And... We get more slushy conditions than dry. I think a lot of people get dry snow. This is not something that we are known for. <laughs> we're known for slushy garbage. Um, and then if we're not careful, it turns into black ice really quick. So it's if you don't want to drive in these things, don't go out of your house. This is my... My personal note to people of Seattle, don't drive in it if you don't want to drive in it. Just stay <laughs> home. Tell your work you're not coming in. Come on. <laughs> Let the rest of us drive in it if we want to. Man. So, yeah. 13 miles. Hour and a half. <sighs> but that's that. What are you working on? Did you finish anything? I, uh, did, not, poofs? I did not finish anything. I didn't finish anything either. I'm very close. Sorry, people. I have not finished anything. I worked a little bit on my shawl. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I worked on, I worked on these socks for my daughter who asked for rainbow socks. I decided to do the squirrel oh, E pattern. She's gotten far. She's got toes. So I've got toes. I just finished the toes. She's got toes. And then <laughs> I just realized, now that I'm done with the toes, I need yeah. to move four stitches from the heel to the top so I can have... An even set of the pattern, so the pattern will just come over a little bit over the oh yeah, yeah. the side of the feet. Yes, because it's an eight stitch pattern repeat. But since oh, these are okay. for my daughter, it's right now it's twenty eight and twenty eight. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. move four on, so it's thirty two. You know, yeah, that works. do math, and then yeah, it'll come over a little that bit. That is how all my socks work. <laughs> because I have really narrow feet, but the distance between like the top of my foot, like this part. Where, you know, you have to get it over your heel. That's the biggest part of my foot. The hugest circumference is getting it over my heel. So, it's swimming at my ankles. It doesn't stand up when it's supposed to up top. And I, I don't make ribbed. I don't make boring ribbed socks. <laughs> thinking about doing it. But, um, it, it's going to be larger up top. And then when I can decrease... I decrease a lot at the bottom. So all my socks wrap around my foot. The pattern. The pattern wraps yeah. around. And further. this is only two and two on each side, so it'll actually look cute. Because mm -hmm. As long as it's not on the bottom, it's just coming down yeah. the sides. No problem. You'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, she'll love them. That's so exciting. Yeah. So you're going to be knitting like me with the shorter shorter amount of socks on the uh, stitches on the bottom yep. than on the top. Yeah. Um, let's see. So you're definitely doing swirly. Yeah. I figured it was nice and easy. She's more interested in the rainbow pattern, like the stri mm -hmm. striping. The, the swirly part is to this just is keep me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so simple enough, but still fun to do. Okay. So you work socks. Yep. And a little bit, I forgot the shawl today, but I have moved on to the next color on my shawl. Are you still in the reds? Uh, is it looking more brown? It's looking more brown. So, yeah, I'll bring that next time. But and That was the Lily Go. The Lily part Go of part world. of your world. So Wait, you got past the lace is what I hear. Yes, I'm on the... You're the, in the stockinette section. The stockinette section. How do Actually, you like I, finished, I finished the stockinette section, and I moved on to the next lace the part short with the laces. short rows. Yeah. How do you like it? It's cool. It's, yeah. a, you know, it's just the only thing, you do have to pay attention with Lily Go, and you have to have the pattern right there, because yeah. it's not something, every road changes. You can't mm -hmm. not not have the pattern. So it's definitely not like mindless TV knitting. Yeah. And I'm jealous because she had way less stitches than I did. Oh yeah, I did. Well, I, I was doing the medium. I was I was doing it based on the size of the yarn I had. How okay, much so yarn you I did had. clue one, clue two, and then did you skip a couple? Yeah, now I'm like on clue like five. So you only have three more clues because there's only seven clues. And the last one is super short. Yeah, now I'm on like on clue five. Oh my goodness. This was the fun part for me as soon as it could do some stuck in it. Or some garter <laughs> all over it. It's a bunch of short rows. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying to do some filler here so I can get to the end of my row and I can tell you what I'm knitting on. 
So, but next week, now that I'm here and I have the old oaks yarn, I you can really, work on your Harry Potter. I really need to get started on the Harry Potter because we only have it to the end of the month. But and luckily, it's what the fifth today, the sixth. Oh, you got it. Yeah, the sixth. So I, I almost to, lost a week. I have to get going. So after this podcast is done, we will wind that yarn here, and then next week I will have hopefully at least a foot of that done, maybe two feet, because like it is it. worsted. Yeah. So it should go fast. It should fly. All right. So um, I haven't worked on much. So la in October, I did the whole cast on all the things the first day. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do that this month, but I didn't. But I ended up, I'm one spike away from finishing what the pattern says to do on this Skyamson shawl. Right. Um, let me show you. The what the pattern says to do what it's actually doing maybe you can't really see i'm gonna have to block this for you guys there's some yarn overs on that edge so it's much like the hitchhiker shawl if you've done martina benton's hitchhiker it has some extra yarn overs on every other row maybe every couple rows and then your one edge has Yarn overs too. That's a detail. And when you bind off, there's going to be something similar to this yarn over edge on your bind off rows. Um, I don't feel like it's big enough yet. So you're right? going to keep on going? I want it to be at least that long. <laughs> arm is over there. She wants it to be her <laughs> wingspan. I want it to be a wingspan. Now, it is garter and it stretches, it's going to stretch a lot. This is the Weasley Boys by O Loops. And you can kind of see when it could pool in sections. Oh, that's a pretty one. And there's some pale blue, orange, and two types of red. And those two types of red are colliding right now. See that swath of red going up? Ooh, I like that <laughs> section. <laughs> that is cool. So um, this is Weasley Boys. It's also per her perfection knot. There's 463 yards in this soft yarn 75 25 um i decided i wonder if any of those colors i have in my uh, stash now these are not colors i usually pick so i'm sitting here knitting and it's kind of consumed me as i'm gonna run out of yarn before i want to right and i think back and i was like hey we went Remember when that yarn store closed in Anna Portis? Yes, Anna's or yeah, Anna Cross Stitch. I think Anna it was. Cross Stitch. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. We made a road trip out there because it's about <laughs> two and a half hours from here, and it's up um, in the start of the, of the San Juan. I mean, we hate to see yarn stores close, but yes. it's a great time to go buy cheap yarn. They were having closeout sales. They were having closeout. Their, yeah. their magazines were fifty cents a piece, and these were. Even ones that were current of that month, it's cheap. Um, most of the yarn was at 75% off at that point. We waited until... <laughs> we waited until the last week the last, of it closed up. The yeah. last couple days of it. Um, and I found this orange skein. And this is Petty Boot. Now, this is a discontinued yarn. Frog Tree Petty Boot. Hey, but it matches the orange in there. Now, it says sock. It's not. Um... I had already decided that it matches the orange close enough. Um, so I'm going to use it. But it's got 255 yards in it. So, so that DK. screams DK heavy sport. Yeah. Right? I think I'm still going to just do it. Because it matches so nicely. And it'll give me more length. This is Sean's ultimate favorite yarn for what he calls his foot pajamas. <laughs> so whatever's left over in this, I'll just add to his petty boo file, um, pile. Um, and for make for him another, sore, some more uh, multicolored foot pajamas? Seamless Salomas is the <laughs> pattern I use, and he calls them his foot pajamas. He has worn through one pair that were green a couple years ago, and he's got a half pink, half red pair right now. And then I found some on a D stash for ten dollars a skein, and so he has a, another skein of brown <laughs> upstairs, and now orange. Whatever's left over from this little make this shawl bigger idea. Um, 
Yeah. This is not my colors. But I think I'm going to try to wear it eventually. I think it looks good. I, I, I think it looks great for my complexion and all, but um, it's definitely not colors I go for, usually. Do you go for reds? I do like reds and oranges. Yeah. I like autumn leaves, so like dark, I rust I love color. autumn. Yeah. You would think I would buy more autumnal colors, and I don't. So I'm going to try to keep this. It, I might keep it now since there's going to be a quite a contrast in weights in this. That'll make it cool, I think. Yeah, so we'll see. So it should end up on orange. I, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do that collision of the two skeins. Um, usually I stripe them for a while and then go solid. So I might do that. Oh, you're going to do a fade? I might fade into the next one. Yes. Uh, much like I did on Sean's Hitchhiker that you've seen on here before, too. Um, so I'm at 32 spikes. The first 14, one day. The rest of them are quite <laughs> slow. So all of a sudden you get a lot of stitches on the needle. But yeah, I'm really enjoying when it's starting to pool. The stripey part isn't as exciting to me, but when it starts pooling and those, <laughs> there's like three sections of pooling right, right there. Now, and, yeah. yeah, down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are the fun bits. So yeah, I'm super stoked on that. This is my main challenge. This is the Patronus challenge that I'm working on. Um... The name of the designer is Otter Moon Designs. So Otter is Hermione's Patronus, and that's what I'm basing this project off of. Um, I didn't cast. Oh, yes, I did. Okay. So remember I was talking to you how Knit Miss came about? Well, Annette and I decided, hey, the next mystery shawl that we do... Um, let's swap yarn. So I'll send you what I was going to make it out of, and you send me what you're going to make it out of, and we'll just knit each other the shawl. One, for the last two shawls we've done together, we have been at the same pace the whole time. And right at the end, I'll zoom and get mine done. But <laughs> not, uh, like, not a lot of time goes on between when I finish and when she finishes. And we chat over our text message machines, and we just do it all together. So we found out that Lily Go's next mystery knit along that's going to be a shawl is not till January. <laughs> we're, both, we're both like texting back and forth saying, that's too far away. Um, got any other ideas? And I said, well, I want to do goo knits. Now, the only reason why I started doing beaded shawls was because I want to do boo knits. And I didn't want to be too intimidated, right? So I thought, oh, well, I'll do it as a mystery, see if I like it. Well, now I've done two mystery shawls with beads, and I really like the process, and I love the lace. Now, um, the lace we have been doing has been true lace. True lace is there's lace going on in both directions, right? Well, Boo Knits in this one only has one row of lace. Um, and then you get a rest row. I'm not sure if you can see what's going on here, but there's some leaves in there that are slowly growing. And there's beads from the start. There's going to be 1,000 beads placed in this. It's going to take two skeins of yarn. She sent me her yarn. And it's Madeline Tosh. And this is called Logwood. So Logwood is a natural dye. Um, that comes from a tree and it gives you purple. So there's some purple in there and some blue. It fades out to kind of a, a lavender kind of color. It's Tosh Merino Light, 100% uh, Superwash Merino Wool and a fingering weight. Now this is single ply. Um, beading with single ply is a little bit more tricky. You're doing that right now too, right? Yes. It does, it did get caught a lot, mm -hmm. but what it is, what it is. A I crochet would... hook does better with uh, tightly wound. Yes. So, yeah. S like soccer lace. So, I have, like, pulled apart thread, but I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, whatever. And it's, put a, it back. it's slow. It's slow. But I don't hate it. Um, this has 420 yards. Madeline Tosh. Tosh Marina Light. Um, loving this color. I thought for sure she was going to send me red. I opened up the box. I was like, it's purple. <laughs> Sean's like, are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm good. I just found yarn that I'm really excited about. Um, 
Now, because it's got a lot of color in there, I went for a very plain bead. And now the bead store stories, we might start right now. So I have just, <laughs> so the last time we recorded, I was supposed to go to the bead store, but I was sick. You were sick. And that was on a Monday. So the next day, Tuesday, I decided, okay, um, I have other errands that I can do because this is North Seattle and driving through the city, it's not worth doing unless you have a couple errands, I've decided. <laughs> so I was going to go to Fremont to drop off some climbing shoes and in Fremont, there's Theo Chocolate and I was like, I can make that stop. Love Theo Chocolate. And then um, in Wallingford is where I needed to go to the bead store. So Fusion Beads is here. They have a brick and mortar here in Seattle. I pull into the parking lot, which seemed really empty for the bead store. I pull up and it says closed. We're open Wednesday through Sunday. It was Tuesday. And I had crossed town. The perfect day for traffic. In one direction, you'll get it really good. And you always have to fight traffic in one of the directions. Well, getting there was fast and easy. I even texted Sean while I was at a stoplight. I was like, I can't believe it. I'm in Wallingford already. <laughs> it's like, you left less than 20 minutes ago. So this was insane. Like the traffic was perfect. The express lanes were going in my direction. It was good. And then I get there and realize, oh, I have to come back another day for this. No good. So I drop off my climbing shoes to get resold. And I didn't even end up at the chocolate store because I was so upset that I had to come back. Um, and I haven't gone back yet. Um, I remembered that we took a bead class with Kim. Yes. In 2015. And we had two different colors. We had a, a white and a black. Well, the black has the interior of silver. So you're getting this like iridescent kind of color off of it. It's charcoal bead, but Did there's... Did you hijack the beads from the... <laughs> yeah, I stole it from that project. And there, we had started that project. We so did. there are some still in that one that I didn't finish that I, I could go steal from if I need to. But um, I'm thinking charcoal lined with silver. I'm going to be able to find it. So I messaged Kim. Are these size six? <laughs> are these size six beads? Do you remember? It's been a couple of years. She was so she was so sweet. She's like, yeah. I was like, okay, but now now I think they're too plain. And she says, well, let me see the yarn you're using. And so she, I showed her the yarn. She's like, no, you want that. That's the perfect thing to use for that project. So, Annetta, I went to your best friend Kim, and she <laughs> helped me with these beads. So just blame her if you think it's boring. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get out there when I run out of beads. I have a stash. That That's how many beads I have to work with. We'll see. So we are making Morticia. A beautiful. No, uh, I don't. I Morticia don't, is in the Adams family. Adams family Anna. Morticia. <laughs> exactly. And then Logwood. So this is going into the Weasley house because what's the Weasley house dad's name? Do you know? What the dad's name no, is? No, I can't remember. He studies muggles. I learned that muggles are humans. Um, now, this is perfect because he could have studied the TV genres <laughs> of the 70s, right? And been like super, super into <laughs> the Adams family, right? So I'm going to do that. And then he was probably also studying how they did natural dyes. <laughs> right? So Logwood, uh, like a call out to natural you got dying. All the... It's all up here, guys. I'm going to make a great story about <laughs> how this is a tribute to him loving muggles and his wife made it for him. And maybe she dyed the yarn. Very naturally. Human, Natural like, dyes. Like, like, like a human does. Yeah, so that he would be so proud. It'd be like a, a muggle inception shawl. It'll be wonderful. So I'm super stoked about that. Made that work. Um, and I have a few more things to cast on. I'm hoping that this doesn't become a detention, but it might. It's going to be two skeins of shawl. And then I've just decided that one's going to be two skeins of shawl as well. <laughs> All right. 
I'm kind of setting myself up for failure in this month, I think. Well, that's fine. You're up for failure. I have to make mitts. I pick a pattern, <laughs> but I have to make mitts. I should probably make two this month, but we'll see how that goes. And I haven't even started my DVD socks. <laughs> yeah, you okay. I didn't realize those were all the things you might be setting yeah. yourself up for failure. Good, good. Yeah. So I thought I was going to be done with this yesterday because I got to spike 32 out of 33, and then I had eight more rows to a bind off. But then you... And then I realized that's not... Lord. That's not even large enough. Gosh. What what is wrong with me? I'm also thinking I should just bind it off, call it done, and then take you come out back. the bind <laughs> off and add more to it later when I really discover it's the wrong size. <laughs> I hope Lydia's not watching. I hope my moderators aren't watching. They're both part of our <laughs> But they might egg me on, so we'll see. Hey. You might see that as an F.O., and then I'm going to discover it's too small. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need to finish something, so I'll cast on other things. Uh, you but I, I don't feel terrible. Liz hasn't cast on this month either. Nope, we're both kind of behind the ball on this one. It didn't help that Vogue Knitting Live was the 3rd of November. No, did not. I did, were you thinking of going back? Or did you get enough? I'm kind of wanting to she go back. She lives pretty close to where it's being held. But at the same time, I was like, it's a good thing I did it because I didn't need to spend any more money. I did not need to increase my stash that much. And plus, there's Knit Fit this weekend. It's so. true. Yeah, so we have uh, independent dyer festivities this weekend coming up. And it's where Sean works. Yeah, so it's this weekend, and so usually, there's no reason we shouldn't go. It's usually it's in Ballard, which is kind of a trek, kind of difficult North to get to. Seattle, that but this you know, year like to, it's yeah. in the it's in Armory, the Seattle Center, Seattle Ar Center Armory. So that makes it a lot easier to get to. So I'm thinking I might have to go maybe on Sunday when parking's free. Yeah, Sean's already decided we should go in together, take the light rail, have breakfast <laughs> oh, on yeah. Cherry Street. You guys make a whole day out of it. Oh yeah. Because he works at the Seattle Center, 